Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I just wanted to start off and say a huge, huge thank you to everyone who watched my last video, which was my first video. I was really nervous to put it out. I'm not just putting my artwork out there and putting myself. I'm not ready for that kind of criticism, you know, I'm scared. No, so you can't suck your cheeks in in the video. But... So it's very scary stuff. But a huge thank you to everyone who liked, shared, viewed, commented, subscribed, whatever. Thank you so much because I really appreciate it and I'm excited about this new YouTube channel and I can't do it without you guys supporting me so thank you so much. And as a little thank you, anyone who did share my YouTube video on their Insta stories, I'm going to pick one of you at random and you'll be featured at the end of this video as a little art shout out. And that goes for all videos going ahead so if you share my latest YouTube video on your Insta stories, I will pick one of you at random and you'll be featured at the end of the episode. Just as a little thank you. So let's get into what this video is all about, which is what materials I use. So I'm gonna go for what paper I use, pens, pencils, paint, brushes, everything, to show how I go from this to this. Okay, so I'm gonna start with what paper I use. This Cassart heavyweight cartridge paper. For me personally, I need a thicker paper because I load it up with quite a bit of paint and thinner paper just buckles under the pressure, it's not up to it, and it just needs to go. So this is 200 GSM, and so it's thick enough to really take quite a bit of paint, um, quite a bit of paper, quite a bit of paint. Uh, you can even add some water in there, and like so you do some watercolor or add water to your acrylic, and it will hold up pretty well. The paper is also pretty white, and it doesn't have much of a grain. So for me, which I really like my illustrations to look clean, bright, white, everything, this is a perfect paper for me to use. I would suggest if you're doing purely watercolor to not use this and to actually invest in some proper watercolor paper. One of the good ones that I'm using is the Winsor & Newton Artist Watercolor Paper. You just need a bit more texture with your watercolor paper so it absorbs the paint and absorbs the water and you can work into it a lot more which you might not as much with a normal cartridge paper. So it's definitely worth the investment. So this is what I'm gonna be drawing today. Hopefully it's gonna look a little bit better than that when I'm finished. That was a sketch of the pose. So to sketch out, I just use the only pencil I've got in the house, which is this Faber, oh my God, this is Faber Castell, and it's a H, which I don't really know what these numbers mean, numbers, what these letters mean, and I just know that I like the lightest possible pencil because I don't want to be rubbing out a whole lot. It's a lot of effort, it's a lot of moving your arm and I ain't got time for that. So I use a H because I just know it's very light on the paper and there's, it doesn't take much to rub it out and I can just go over it um, if I make mistakes and you're not building up the color too much and then once you rub it out, you'll see the pencil underneath. So, cause this is just a fleeting moment. I mean, I'm not fussy with the pencils and all that but I tried to just get rid of the pencil stage as quick as possible because I find it a bit boring um, and then get straight onto the inking. So when I'm ready to start inking, I use fine liners. And at the moment, I'm, they've only just been released, but I'm using the Windsor & Newton fine liners. They come in five different sizes so far. I'm pretty sure that's five. They range from 0.1, which is the thinnest, up to one millimeter, which is the thickest. And I start with 0.1 to ink absolutely everything, just because it's a really thin one and it's good to start with and then you can build up on it. Then I use 0.3 or 0.5 to just add some more details in if I wanna make the lashes um, a bit thicker, if I wanna just highlight some different details. Then I use a one millimeter one to fill in bigger areas so I'm not using so I'm not there for like 20 minutes using the 0.1. But I do recommend these fine liners, they have been good to me. So once I've sketched it out and I've added the fine liners on top, I will then rub out the pencil. And I mean, I'm, I'm a simple artist. I mean, this is what I used to rub out. I mean, can you even see that? And I actually found the other half of this 20 minutes before I started recording under a rug over here. So I mean, I'm not that precious with my materials. This rubber does be just fine. Um, and again, it's the only one I've actually got in the house, so I'm gonna have to pop to the shop once this is done. Uh, but it does the job. Now onto painting, which is the funnest part. Let's get messy. Um, so predominantly I use acrylic paint. I do venture into watercolor and some others sometimes. It's a thicker paint than watercolor and I like that you can see the brush strokes when you use it. 
that adds a texture because I'm often worried that my, uh, my artwork looks a little bit flat. So if I use acrylic, I feel like there's more texture, more brush strokes to my work. So the acrylics I use are the Winsor & Newton Professional Acrylic. Because I'm professional. <laughs> Fake it till you make it. I've tried a few acrylics, but these have been probably the nicest. Um, they're so pigmented. <laughs> pigmented? They're really thick paint and it's not watery and it just goes on the page really nicely. So I do recommend those. The only thing is I don't tend to use the white that much with that. I use a different brand for the white and it's with a name that I can relate to personally. It's called Heavy Body by Liquitex. So the reason I use this white is because a lot of the white acrylics normally tend to, if you mix them with any type of paint, tend to just be used for mixing color and they're not strong enough on their own really. So Liquitex is a lot thicker. So if you use white like I do, which is as a highlight at the end, um, and you're not wanting to mix colors, then I recommend this because no matter how much paint is underneath or how pigmented the paint is underneath, this will be strong white on top. So you can have a black underneath and use this and it will come out pure white. So it's definitely useful. But this poor one is running out. I mean, there's like none now. I'm gonna get crafty on this. I do tend to water down my acrylic sometimes just because I do I do want to play with the opaqueness of the colour sometimes, so some people are like, oh, do you use watercolour? And I don't tend to that often because I feel like once you add some water to the acrylic, it can act as more of a gouache and a watercolour, so I don't really need to. I just realised I talked about the paint I use, I didn't talk about the brushes, and we're not doing finger painting, at least not in this video. So the ones that I use are these amazing Derwent, <gasps> these are looking sorry for themselves. But the Derwent watercolor brushes, and what is amazing about these, which, which blew my mind first time I saw them in the shop, is that they actually, like me, hold water. So, they're perfect for traveling, perfect for watercolor, but I do bend the rules a little bit and use them for acrylic, and that's why they're looking like this. Remember to wash your brushes, kids. I've also tried the Pentel version, which look like these, but seeing as I'm using them for acrylic, and sometimes I don't want water mixed with the acrylic, I just want the strong color, these, the Pentel ones, tend to leak the water, but these hold on tight to it. They are selfish. So unless you do physically squeeze it, the water's not gonna come out, which is great if you're wanting to use them as a normal brush. They come in a pack of three, which is three different nib sizes, which are these, all looking a bit sorry for themselves. I'm sorry. It's not my fault, but it is. It's because I end up napping after I draw and then I completely forget that I painted and they end up looking like that. My bad. Now one last main material I use, this isn't all the materials I use, but I will do another video where I go through if I'm doing like a watercolor or a market illustration. But this is predominantly what I use. But the last thing I end up doing final touches with is this godsend, which is a Uniball uh, white gel pen. And why I love this is because you can save an illustration with these. I mean, if you've worked your illustration and it's just looking a bit, then, Add some highlight with this and it will lift it off the page. I mean, if I use this as an example, I use to do the shining um, highlights here, I use the white gel pen. And it just, it really brings it out a lot more. So I do recommend those. And the Uniball is the best brand I've found to do it. And I just buy them for in Paper Chase. So they're very easy to find. Now one of the signature things of my style is the thick black line that goes from the top to the bottom of the image. Um, I use it to sort of highlight the important aspects of a drawing or of a garment that I'm illustrating. So for that I do use a Sharpie. 
because this is such, I mean, the thickness is great. It's a fine point one. Um, it's such a strong color. And as long as you wait for the paint to dry before using it, because I'm impatient and I don't always wait, but as soon as this touches some wet paint or some water, whew, is, you know, goodbye. <coughs> And that's it, so that is the main bulk of the materials I use. As I mentioned earlier, there are a few more uh, materials I use because I've got a big old drawer of stuff down here. That is what I mostly use day to day for an illustration. So I hope that uh, was slightly interesting to find out what materials I use. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and then comment below what is your favorite brand of products to use because mine at the moment are Windsor & Newton just because the quality seems to be pretty amazing across the board no matter what product you use. Um, also, if you want to see more videos from me, then go subscribe below and I shall see you in the next video. So, thanks guys. So for this week's art shout out, it is Betty Moo Arts. I mean, she's an absolutely lovely person anyway, and I pop her artwork up here. But if you're into anything that's bold, amazing, full of energy, and you love aliens, then her work is right up your street. And I do recommend you check her out because she definitely has a unique take on everything. So definitely go see what she's up to. So remember every video I'm doing, I'm gonna shout out to someone that is supported my previous videos. So share this video on your Insta stories and it could be you in the next video to be featured at the end. So thank you so much.